I suspect I should ask for more sympathy from you. One, because I'm following Joey Ayala, who probably did an illegal act here. <laughs> probably lang. We will have to discuss that in the Supreme Court. <laughs> and second, because I was given a very difficult task, which is within the next 18 minutes, I have to convince you that lawyers matter. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm used to very difficult tasks, you know, talking with the largest insurgent group in the, in the country and asking them to sign a framework agreement. That was very difficult, but it took me two years, not 18 minutes. But in any case, I'd like to start with 1979 when I entered the University of the Philippines, knowing that uh, what I wanted to do was to become a lawyer, I entered the portals of this college, the School of Economics. And at that time, we were only starting to discover that uh, martial law was not what it was meant to be, that there, were per there was pervasive poverty all around, and human rights violations were happening. I entered the UP College of Law in 1983, and the following year, Nino Aquino was shot, Leon Alejandro was assassinated, and we were on the streets walking and asking that the dictator come down. And uh, of course, at that time, we saw that the, the law was not also what it was meant to be. I became a flag lawyer. I joined the Free Legal Assistance Group. And one of the first cases that were given to me was a raid of a shanty in Novaliches. And they found some firearms over there. And they asked me to do the impossible, which was to try to have the persons acquitted of illegal possession of firearms but they had firearms. And so I thought, is this what, what a lawyer is supposed to be? So I thought to myself, what should I do? Then I remembered constitutional law, Article 3, Section 2. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, places, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall be inviolable, inviolable. And no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall issue except upon probable cause to be determined by the judge after particularly describing the place. Wait a minute. Quote, unquote, after particularly describing the UP kasi ako, kaya alam ko yun. Okay. <laughs> after particularly describing the place to be searched. Wait a minute, I looked at the warrant. Unnumbered shanty. So I moved to quash and moved to exclude the evidence. It was granted, my clients were acquitted, they were NPA people, but now they rejoined society. So that was one of my first successes as a lawyer, and buoyed by that, inspired by that, we thought that law mattered for people for whom law is very real. So what we did was set up the Legal Rights and Natural Resources Center. We scoured the country, worked with indigenous people's groups, went up mountains, Mount Apo several times, six times, I think with Joey Ayala, and then we found out that there was a uh, commercial geothermal power plant that was about to be constructed right at the heart of the ancestral domain of the Bogobo. So what did we do as lawyers? We crafted a 57-page petition, which we thought was very creative. First and foremost, it was a protected area. And at the middle of the protected area, they were going to put a commercial project, a commercial geothermal power plant. And we thought, arguing, that in a protected area, in the concept of the law, in the, in the idea of what a protected area was, as we imported from developed countries, there should be no commercial activity inside. First argument. Second argument. This was the first environmental impact statement assessed by the DNR. And we thought that it was high time because there was section 16 of article 2 of the Constitution that the rhythm of harmony and nature required that the court extended its judicial review more strictly into administrative cases coming from the DNR so that not only substantial evidence would be examined, but they would look at the use of science in terms of the environmental impact statement. Very good arguments, very brilliant, very creative. So we filed it with the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court issued a one-page decision dismissing our case outright <laughs> without even asking the respondents to file a comment. But undeterred, because we had faced the community, we had faced civil society, we had faced an entire movement wanting to prevent the, uh, the, in the invasion of uh, Apo Sandawa, or Mount Apo at that time, we filed a motion for reconsideration, again arguing the same points, but citing more, lo more law journals and more jurisprudence on our side. The motion for reconsideration was longer than the petition. And finally, the Supreme Court again came out with a one-page decision 
This time in one paragraph, it said, dismiss, no substantial arguments raised. And that was our case in Mount Apo. But we did not lose heart because we saw that the law had to be argued at the right time. So that in, uh, sometime in the year 2000, faced with a community that was saying that it was facing the largest mining concession ever awarded in this country, 95,000 hectares. As far as your eye can see, is 400 hectares on all ends. 94,000 straddles four provinces in Mindanao. So what we did for them was craft a petition which was entitled Labugal Tribal Association versus DNR. Our argument was very simple. The Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines in Article 12, Section 4 said that only financial, either financial or technical assistance agreement would be allowed to any fully owned foreign concession in this country. This was a change from our old constitution. Now, this concession was fully foreign owned, but they operated, they would manage, they would provide financial assistance and technical assistance. It was an end, not an or. So we filed with the Supreme Court arguing our case that the intention of the sovereign people expressed to the Constitution was to declare this law as unconstitutional. January of 2004, with a majority of eight, four, six against, and one taking no part, Supreme Court of the Republic of the Philippines declared that the first FTAA in this country, the first largest fully foreign-owned mining concession in this country, was unconstitutional, null and void ab initio. We celebrated. We went up the mountains. We told our people that this is how the law moves. This is your constitution. You are part of the Republic of the Philippines. But then there was a motion for reconsideration that was filed. And the motion for reconsideration was heard by the Supreme Court. No less than two retired justices arguing for the Chamber of Mines. And we argued as best as we could. I stood there for eight hours in front of the Supreme Court and bank. And they stood there for a like number of hours arguing their case. By December of that same year, the vote was 10 for one. And we lost the case. It was reversed in a span of 11 months. The Supreme Court read that provision in a different way. And we had to go up to the community to explain to them why law still mattered. And it was a difficult way to explain to them. That is what the law is. Sometimes it is for you, sometimes it's against you. But why does, why does the law matter and why do lawyers matter? For, a sim for simple reasons, four simple reasons. The first sim simplest reason is because the law is real. The law is real. Because there is a law, police can come to get you. You will be caught for color coding. You will be arrested for some, some kind of an offense including singing the national anthem in the wrong way. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so, uh, Popo is a lawyer. <laughs> including, <laughs> maraming huhuliin kayo lahat. Okay. Hindi ako nakinig, hindi ako kumanta. Hindi ako kasama. The law is real for people who need the law. For instance, a daughter that is raped by a father 11 times. We just they made that ruling a week ago. The law is real for people who need to go against a tax person who is asking them to pay more than, than what they do. Therefore, you will need lawyers. Second reason that lawyers matter is that because the law evolves. Before, when we filed the Mount Apo case, there was no writ of Kalikasan. Now there is one. Lawyers drafted it. Before, when we were counsels to the families of involuntarily disappeared, all we had was a writ of habeas corpus. Today, you can have a writ of amparo, and more than that, you can have a writ of habeas data. Before, we cannot argue ancestral domain. Today, you have the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. Before, you cannot argue uh, environment. Today, you can, you can get a writ of kalikasan in any of the levels of our court, and we have issued a writ of kalikasan for several projects in the court. Lawyers will help you adjust the law in order that, of course, more people will be assisted. And of course, in order to balance the needs of our country for commercial development and the needs for our country for social justice. The third reason that lawyers matter is because the law helps us understand ourselves. 
Sure, there are concepts of property which defines who to us is an agricultural tenant and who is a landowner. But our concepts of property also say that uh, property is about social justice, that property can be limited. Hence, you have limitations on your exercise of property, taking into consideration the environment. You have nuisance provisions in the, in, in the law. And you have provisions both in treaty and in the law saying that in times of war, whether it be of full-blown wars between two states or wars of, uh, known as armed conflicts of a non-international character, such as what happened in Zamboanga, that civilians are to be protected. They tell us that civilians are important. Of course, we still have to struggle because laws evolve. Men can only commit adultery. Women can uh, concubinage, I'm sorry. Women can only commit, can, can commit adultery. Prostitutes are criminals. We, have, we still have a lot to do. The only way that you can separate from your spouse, well, one of the ways that you can separate from your spouse, <laughs> believe me, I have experience in this. The only way that, uh, one of the ways that you can separate from your spouse is to actually prove the condition called psychological incapacity, a concept of only one religious sect within our country and not of all. But still these laws exist, they can evolve, they tell us who we are, and therefore it is important that we have lawyers who understand you and therefore try to change it so that how we constitute ourselves how we understand our identity is there. And by the way, Bang Samoro soon will be, by law, not a minority, but one of a legitimate identity within our country. And the fourth reason, I think most important, that lawyers matter is because lawyers are a luxury. You only go to lawyers in times of need. Unless they are your friends, in which case you have drinks with them, not because they're a lawyer. They start talking about the law, they start becoming boring. <laughs> but normally, you would want to go to a lawyer only when you are at the end of your rope, when you are actually faced with time in prison, when you are actually faced with an assessment from the BIR, when you're actually faced with the need to settle your domestic resources, when you're actually faced with conditions like a mining company entering your ancestral domain. Here is an example of a situation which was caused by a lawyer. A lawyer got a TRO to stop a mining firm from entering mountains in Nueva Vizcaya. And she was a very diminutive uh, individual, very petite, but she was able to get a writ in order to stop a mining company there. You would only go to a lawyer at that time. Hence, lawyers matter, because they will hold your hand. Because they are the ones that should attend to you with compassion. Because they are the ones who will sit with you in your times of trouble even with your spouses, even with your enemies. They are the ones who will be there and will stick with you, hopefully, with or without the payment of attorney's fees, <laughs> until the very end. And because they need to be there, therefore lawyers matter. We need lawyers. We need good lawyers. We need lawyers who understand that they are not a joke. We need lawyers to understand that their careers are not careers. It is a profession. It is a passion. And I tell you, that is why lawyers matter. I am Marvick Leonen. I am a lawyer.